I don't like how it looks. I don't like how it feels. <laughs> What's going on? <gasps> oh my gosh, this is such a bad start. What's up guys? Welcome back. So today we're going to be playing with a bunch of makeup that is new to me. Things that have either just come out or that I have just heard of and this is going to be kind of a mashup of a bunch of different uh, brands and products and things like that because it's what I refer to as my buzzer beater video. It is like the last few things that I feel like I can fit into one video before we start doing my like mid-year roundups, which everybody gets really excited about, I get really excited about. So if you haven't been following my channel for very long, you might not know that, you know, obviously, <laughs> We review a lot of stuff on here and it's hard to keep track of sometimes, especially for people who are new, which, you know, I really appreciate new people and I don't want to make you guys have to go and watch every single video for the last like, you know, year and a half to like play catch up. I do kind of a fails video mid-year and end of the year and then a big like best of the best video mid-year and end of year that rounds up everything that <laughs> I feel like is worth mentioning that I've reviewed so far that year. And sometimes there will be honorable mentions where uh, I feel like even though I didn't review something this year, it's still my favorite, things like that. And I feel like it does really like help answer a lot of questions all in one go. So that's not this video. <laughs> Today we're just gonna be doing a get ready with me. I have some new stuff from the lip bar. I have some stuff from Uma. Um, all this stuff is going to be a first impression today. And I also have the new Ritual de Fee Nectar, I think is what they're called. What are they called? Color Nectar Pigment Balms. So those are the new blushes. And then I have some brow products from M Cosmetics and we'll also just be kind of playing with a bunch of other things that you've probably seen before. So I'm going to move you guys in and we'll go ahead and get started. <sighs> if you're watching this already and you're like, gosh, Kaki, you seem kind of low energy. I am low energy. <laughs> Yesterday was a really, really hard day for me. Oh, ho, 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 we have an itch. Actually, let's go ahead and start with this. So this is the Fast Face Skin Serum Foundation with Hyaluronic Acid and Irish Moss Extract from the brand The Lip Bar. They are new to me. They're out of Detroit. It's a black owned brand that I definitely initially heard of through Kelly Gooch. And I'm not, I'm not totally familiar here with this. I got the shade 1.01. Ooh. Let's see. <laughs> Looks to be a good color. Well, maybe a little bit yellow, but if it's a serum foundation, we should be able to spread her out. I am not sure about this delivery system. Definitely not my favorite because it's kind of germy. <laughs> In my opinion, like I just think that that living in the brush like that is kind of a germy situation personally, but oh, it is a little bit yellow, isn't it? It's kind of oxidizing a little bit on me. It's also like drying down really fast. Oh my gosh, <laughs> what's going on? Oh my gosh, this is such a bad start. <laughs> no. No, what's happening? You, I, you can't see it probably, but it's like drying down so fast. I can feel it drying down. Ah, I'm gonna add some of my Ilia in there and hope that uh, it helps thin it out a little bit. Oh my skin, that was wild. I did not enjoy that at all. Off to a very, very strange start. Sorry about that guys. I, like grabbed whatever brush was near me. That's a first impression for you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm always going to try and wear a foundation as thinly as I possibly can. And that just was not having it. That was not having it at all. Okay. <laughs> I feel like we managed to salvage that a little bit and I'm actually going to go in with the Uma, what is this? This is the Stay Woke Brightening Concealer. Uma is another, I think I'm saying that right, is another black owned brand that has a really cool, unique take on um, complexion products in the sense that they understand that different skin tones actually have different needs. That's a nice color. I also have their foundation and their little highlighter stick. We're not gonna powder today, I don't think. So I'll probably get to use those. Okay, so why am I so low energy? <laughs> Yesterday was a really rough day. <laughs> I, Went to bed on Saturday night 
That's actually so lovely. That is so pretty. Look at that, it's like dewy. And it doesn't have a ton of coverage. It almost has like a nice reflective quality to it. I really, really like that, just like first blanch. So I went to bed on Saturday night and I was told by my doctor, you know, to try and stay ahead of constipation. And so I drank some senna tea thinking, you know what, I, you know, it's always really gentle on my belly and you know, we just kind of need to get things moving. And I don't really think that that was my critical error. The day before we had kind of just gone and taken the dog on a really long walk in the heat. Maybe I got dehydrated, I'm not really sure. Maybe it was just overexertion and I'm just not used to it kind of being pregnant and not moving around as much as I usually do. Cause usually I would go and like run three miles in a hundred degree weather, but like this was just a, a walk around the park, <laughs> you know? Um, I'm not really sure, but basically I woke up yesterday with what I can only really understand as like an IBS attack, but at the time I didn't know what it was. And so I was using a lot of different medications and things like that to try and figure out like, why, I don't know, I just felt like maybe I was still constipated or maybe I was like had a lot of gas or something like that. And sorry if this is like TMI, but this is, this is pregnancy in a nutshell. I got relief from those medications and still felt really, really bad. Like I still felt like everything was like tensing up in my stomach. And that's really scary when you're pregnant. You think, okay, I'm going to preterm labor. Like that's where I was at yesterday. And I was really, really scared. <laughs> I just had like a really bad physical day and a really bad psychological day. Let's contour a little bit because I can do that fairly mindlessly. So this is the Salt New York Cream Tint Pro. I always just call it Kiki's stuff and everybody's probably like, who? Um, <laughs> she's linked on my front page, go watch her videos. But anyway, um, yeah, so I, you know, ended up kind of late in the day hoping, you know, ha having hoped all day that it was going to improve and just kind of being at my wits end and getting on the phone with my, like my doctor's office on a Sunday. <laughs> that was really fun. Sat there on hold for 40 minutes and they were actually really helpful. She paged the doctor on call and asked him, you know, like what that I should do. And you know, they, <laughs> they basically gave me two options. They were like, you know, you can come in now, but you'd have to come to labor and delivery which is like emergency room for pregnant people basically, like not like, oh, you're going into labor, but that's where you would have to show up. It's just the name of the department. Or, you know, kind of just hydrate, take some Tylenol, hope for the best, you know, see if, you know, you still feel bad in the morning kind of thing. Took some Tylenol after I had kind of taken all this other stuff and the Tylenol actually like really took the edge off and also drinking a lot of water really helped, which by the way, that seems stupid. You're probably like, why didn't you just try that? When you're pregnant, water gives you heartburn. <laughs> so you drink milk, you drink a lot of stuff. And like, I do drink water, but like chugging water is an invitation for a lot of pain. And so you just try and like sit throughout the day. If I just like tank on water, it's really uncomfortable. Um, so yeah, I did drink a lot of water and you know, rehydrate myself and everything. And I did manage to eat a little bit of dinner. I'm gonna take a little bit of my powder real quick and just powder this just ever so slightly because it's Sticky, <laughs> sticky and it's uncomfortable and I don't have the patience for that today. Once I got some food in me, cause I had like a bunch of leftovers that I had just prepared. I just heated some soup up and had like a little grilled cheese, gluten-free bread, you know, <laughs> how I live. I got a moment of distance from it for a second and I just emotionally broke down because I realized like how scared I had been that, you know, I was gonna go into preterm labor at 22 weeks. Like that was really, really scary for me. And the sense of relief, but also just the familiarity of this being the way that my body responds to any kind of physical trauma, which that's what led me to believe that it was actually something kind of stemming from physical exertion or something like that, because it was like the same kind of um, muscle spasms and things like that. And kind of that overall got hit by a truck feeling that I have experienced like when I got altitude sickness or like when I took a really hard spill on some ice in uh, Telluride. And basically I will like, all my muscles just freak out. I go into some kind of weird like physical panic mode and I get like, I didn't get a fever this time, but also I think it's because I've just been having a lot of like emotional stress. I'm actually gonna start with uh, these two guys. So these are the new nectars, the color nectars from um, 
from Ritual Defeat, but like, look at the difference in size. I don't know the difference in the price. I'll put the difference in the price on the screen, but like this is their like original <laughs> blush and this is the new blush and they are just very, very different in size. So 3.8 grams and this one has, oh, 3.2 grams? Oh my gosh. They just shrunk the packaging, but like there's almost exactly the same amount of product in there. Huh, glad that I checked. That's really interesting. <laughs> Don't be fooled. So I'm gonna start with the shade Bee Sting. These are the only two that they had left when I got there. There were four shades, but they sold out really fast. So I got Bee Sting and Blood Flower. So yeah, this is definitely something that, oh my, that's pink, um, that I've experienced in the past, but you know, in the context of pregnancy, it was really, really scary because I didn't know, you know, whether it was just like living in my gut or whether it had to do with my uterus, which is very, very different. And um, the baby was kicking the whole time. <laughs> That was very reassuring, but I did. I spent all day in bed yesterday and now today I do. I feel like I got absolutely hit by a truck. I'm going to probably mention her in my favorites as well, but I've been like binge watching this creator that I just stumbled upon that like, I think one of her videos, like her videos tend to go viral anyway. I'm probably not the only person who got served this video kind of out of nowhere, but her name is Yana Yintin. And she's this Swedish woman who like moved to uh, this village that in Northern Sweden that her like family lived in 400 years ago and like renovated a house with her husband and they just live in nature with their dog and their cat. And it's just like the most relaxing thing I've ever watched in my life. It's so beautiful. And like, that was all I did yesterday was just watch Yona Yen and like it just, healed my soul so that was really appreciated but i'm gonna actually go in yeah with blood flower here i like these they're really really pretty they're lightweight they're a lot less pigmented uh than the original one that i've used like when you dab it on the back of your hand like you get pigment but it's very very translucent and i think that that's actually going to be really beautiful on a lot of different skin tones as well and yeah the other thing is as soon as i just know as soon as i talk about stuff like this that people will want to help <sighs> I have experienced more helping <laughs> since becoming pregnant than I ever had before. Because I have stomach issues, right? And I've always had digestive issues and I have tried just about gosh darn everything. And one of the best things that I ever found to work for me was going organic. And there is a, a subtle, but very important difference between offering your story and framing it as such and telling someone what they should do. If you've ever read <laughs> I Contain Multitudes, which I <laughs> honestly, I'm not sure I would recommend it. I will give you the clips notes because it's a, a really, really intense book. It's like basically like a science textbook. We listened to it in the car driving up to Colorado for 16 hours. But uh, basically your microbiome is like the most complicated thing on the planet. <laughs> it's like super, super diverse and your microbiome is different between your like elbow pits, you know what I mean? And so if they're that different on different parts of your body, then approximating someone else's <laughs> Uh, microbiome and their issues and what would help them based on your own is absurd. Like it's just categorically by definition, totally absurd. But that does not stop people from constantly trying to give me advice. And honestly, like it was one thing before I was pregnant, but now it's just kind of, it makes me realize like what, one thing that I'm gonna try and be like really nice about this, but one thing that I think is like the biggest issue that society suffers from. You thought you, thought you were just gonna come here for a makeup video, didn't you? Um, something that society suffers from is the inability to sit with an uncomfortable thought or an uncomfortable feeling, just discomfort in general. And that, if you think about it, is kind of the root of so much short-sightedness, judgment, things like that. And, you know, you'll find that it really exists in the most benign ways in a lot of conversations when you're kind of going through something, right? and either physical or, or emotional or anything like that. And if you confide in a certain person, depending on you know where what their understanding is and what their kind of emotional uh, literacy is and maturity is in terms of um, you know whether they understand how to navigate these kinds of things and how to sit in discomfort and um, you know how to feel through feelings instead of around them. 
Um, sometimes you will kind of run across people who will try to fix you instead of just listening. And before you like take offense and be like, well, you know, people are just trying to help. You, you kind of have to like, I don't know, read the four agreements if you've ever read that book. And it talks about one of them is that like, don't ever take anything personally because no, nothing that's ever said to you is about you. It's about that person that's saying it to you. And so, so much of the time when people are giving advice, advice, they're trying to be heard more than anything. And that's demonstrated very much in my comment section when I get, I'm gonna find that highlighter. When I get someone who comments late in like after my video has been uploaded, oh my, that is like a lot lighter than, a lot deeper than I thought that it was. This is in white pearl. It's literally the lightest one that they make, but it's still like a blush and a contour almost. Hmm, I don't know how I feel about that. But yeah, someone will basically comment something that has already been commented multiple times, a product recommendation or something that they feel like meets the needs of something that I was talking about in the video, except dozens of people have already commented it, right? And you could just say, well, that person should have just read the comments. They would have, com they would have commented that anyway, because it's not about me. It's not about helping me. It's about needing to be heard. I know this because they will then come to my DMs and say the exact same thing. Instead of reading the comments, realizing that I've already gotten the advice that they're trying to provide or the recommendation that they're trying to provide, they need it to come from them. They need to be the one who delivered the help. And that isn't about me. That's about them. And that kind of thing, like you could probably look at it from the standpoint of like, well, Khaki, you know, just ignore it. <laughs> like, obviously, like you have the choice of whether or not you actually want to hear that advice. But honestly, I try to bring a person to person approach to every comment. I try and hear it as if I'm talking to that person. And that can be really emotionally risky sometimes. And so that puts me in a position sometimes where if I read the same comment over and over and over again, which is, you know, it's fine. I would suggest that you read the comments to figure out if someone else has already said something, but also when you get advice that is clearly about the other person and not about you. Like for example, on a vlog, I was talking about how I had really, really bad constipation um, and really bad uh, gas in the beginning of my pregnancy, like in the first trimester someone who had never been pregnant commented on that video and told me like a litany of things that I needed to do, that I needed to cut out fiber or that I needed to add more fiber or that I needed to cut out dairy or that. And it was coming from a place where that person was trying to solve me because I made them uncomfortable and they needed to be heard and noticed and acknowledged, not because their advice was really going to help me because they, have never been pregnant. They were giving me very blanket, like nutritionist advice. And truth be told, guys, there's actually nothing wrong with not being okay. That's the biggest thing is especially with pregnant women, but literally all of our society has this big hang up about something not being okay. There's so much pressure to be okay. And you find that the advice that you get, if you really think about it, most of the time, it's because someone is uncomfortable. They're made uncomfortable by the fact that you're not okay. And they care about it, but more than anything, it makes them uncomfortable and they wanna fix it. And they wanna be the person who imparted the fixing. It's at the end of the day, not really about the person that you're giving the advice to. Now, let's actually, I want some more pigment. I feel like those nectar blushes are really not very pigmented and I need a little bit more punch. So I'm actually gonna go in with the original Ritual Defi here, and this is in Delirium, and it is a really pretty rosy color. So if you're like bristling at everything that I just said, allow me to offer an alternative. So something funny about my channel, you actually cannot use the word should in my comments. <laughs> That's how harmful um, I think that kind of forced advice can be. As soon as you say should, you have like taken the dominance in that situation. And a lot of times that's just really like not welcome. I definitely feel really pale. I think it has to do with my lips. I have all this makeup on my lips. I'm like completely out of breath. I have no energy today. Oh my God. Okay. I'm gonna go in with the M Cosmetics Fine Liner Brow Pencil in Light Taupe. This is new to me and this was something that you guys recommended very strongly <laughs> when I did my first video of her makeup and so. 
I have used this before and I do think that it's really pretty. So I said that it was a, uh, a subtle distinction and that, uh, you know, that there is an alternative. And the alternative that I would offer is understanding that what you're about to say is just sharing your story and that's okay. It's okay to want to share your story and to want to be heard and to want to be acknowledged, but you don't have to frame it as advice because that's not what it is. It's sharing your story. And I, I know that that's subtle. I know that that's kind of splitting hairs to some people, but if you are like, Hey, here is something that I experienced. Here is something that I enjoyed that worked for me. Here was the, you know, the struggle that I overcame. That's absolutely and completely welcome. <laughs> I want people to share their stories. It is when someone says, here's what I did. You should do what I did. Can you hear the difference there? And I know that, you know, you're probably thinking, well, you know, couldn't you just give people the benefit of the doubt? I can to a certain degree, but I also am a very small creator by comparison to a lot of people who are getting a lot of advice. And it made me think about it too, because like Raw Beauty Christie just announced that she's pregnant and I just, I cannot talk about it for too long because I will cry. <laughs> I'm so happy for her. Gosh, it makes me just so grateful for how easily all of it came to me. Yes, the symptoms of pregnancy suck, but I didn't have to like try for 12 years kind of thing. Like she, I'm so happy for her. But anyway, um, I just know that now that, you know, obviously she's always had a really large following, but um, she has a million subscribers now. It's just a big milestone that she, as soon as she starts, you know, talking about the symptoms of pregnancy and things like that, and like the Q and A that she's planning, the comments are going to be caring and full of advice. And first of all, guys, I just need to say this. If you've never been pregnant, please don't give pregnant people advice on being pregnant. <laughs> it's like the equivalent of mansplaining. I don't know what it is, like what you would call it. It's like non-pregnancy splaining, but like if you have advice that worked for you as far as your digestion or things like that, and you've never been pregnant, understand that you're one person and a person who has a baby in them is two people and they are not in the driver's seat. And so if you, when you say cut out dairy or cut out this or cut out that, please understand that not only is this person exhausted and miserable and at their wit's end because of all the symptoms, but a very simple solution like skipping meals, you know, allowing your digestion to recover or cutting out large parts of your diet that are like full of calcium and things like that, that are very much recommended by your doctor. It's just not an option. Yeah. I, it's just the simplest way I can put it to benefit other people who are going through it. Just please, please like temper yourself, put a filter, like stop yourself from giving advice about pregnancy to pregnant people. If you've never been pregnant, just don't even a doctor would know better than to do that because they obviously are not treating that person. So like, Think about where that puts you on the expert scale. Okay, let's do some eyes. You know, actually I've got this little go off minute finish face palette from uh, the lip bar and it's technically meant for your face, but these colors are so subtle and beautiful. Um, I'm going to use them on my eyes. Like that looks like a perfect transition shade. Per like this just looks like an eyeshadow palette to me, you know, <laughs> and that's what I'm going to do with it today. But yeah, the, the reason I say that, you know, um, Raw Beauty Christie kind of made me think of it and everything is because, you know, I was watching the unnatural vegan. She's a delight, by the way, you don't have to be vegan <laughs> to care about her videos. She's just really smart. I <laughs> just like listening to her talk. I feel like she and I would be friends, you know, because she's just a really no nonsense, really articulate person. And I just like people like that. She seems like she's just the most unpretentious person. And I really appreciate that about her, especially as uncommon as that kind of is on YouTube. The, the thing that she said, and she said it way better than I did, honestly. Um, she just said like, understand that every creator for every time that you try and give a creator advice, uh, depending on how large their audience is, you are one of like an ocean of people that they're having to like individually consider the advice that you're giving them. And that in itself, regardless of the quality of the advice is very, very daunting. Like it's just really a lot. It makes for like, I don't know, you'd call it like advice fatigue. Think about the last conversation that you had when you were going through something that was difficult or annoying or anything, and you just needed to be heard out. You just needed your friend to tell you that sucks. I'm sorry. Maybe they did, or maybe they said, well, have you tried this? 
and you go, okay, uh, yeah, I did try that and it didn't really work. Well, have you talked to your doctor? Yeah, I talked to my doctor. We're just kind of at a wait and see point and whatever. Well, um, is it going to get better in the future? Has this happened to you before? And you realize that they're not trying to help you. They're trying to solve your problem so that they're not uncomfortable anymore because they care about you. And so it's coming from a place of caring. It's not like a totally, you know, selfish thing, but it stems from exactly where I started this. And that is that the, <laughs> the true thing that we all suffer from in this society and something that you literally have to pinpoint, isolate and address in yourself because no one's going to do it for you. Unfortunately, we don't get taught this and we should is that it's okay to not be okay. <laughs> and that your suffering is not an inconvenience to someone else. And that someone else's suffering isn't necessarily something that you need to solve right away. It's something that it just exists. You know what I mean? And things are going to be hard and we have to feel through our feelings and we have to process them instead of trying to like, put a cap on them and fix them. Cause I genuinely think that that's where like everything from racism to toxic masculinity to uh, midlife crises come from basically is just our inability to feel our feelings in real time and, um, and acknowledge them in real time, basically. That, this is actually like, it's super, super like uh, subtle and low pigment, but this could be like one of my new favorite eyeshadow palettes, even though it's not an eyeshadow palette at all. But in the same breath, I want to thank all the people who have shared their pregnancy stories because they're a scream. Pregnancy is hilarious, you guys. Like when you finally just take a step back from the symptoms and everything, it's a completely absurd process that is one of the sources of the most genuine humor I have experienced in a long time. The women who have shared their stories with me are so funny. I had once one woman, God, I love her. She, uh, I wanna like make a video honestly where like, Everyone just submits their wild pregnancy story and I just react to them because I want to. Like they're so funny. But um but the way that people talk about it because pregnancy is such honestly it's a nightmare and anybody who says it isn't is ugh, either lucky or lying. But anyway, um <laughs> She was like, I went into labor like a month early or something. And I was like, oh yeah? She goes, yeah, it was completely unexpected. My water broke at work and I filled up my favorite boots. <laughs> I didn't have a change of clothes. <laughs> I, was just like, I don't know, I was like crying, laughing. She felt, I couldn't get over. I filled up my favorite boots when my water broke. It was just so stinking. Like, you know, obviously her baby is fine, like her child is fine and everything went fine. But like that, that, that freaking moment is so flipping funny. And so, yeah, I do want to thank a lot of the people who, you know, do offer their stories and they do offer their experiences. This is what happened to me. Here's what I do. Um, these are my symptoms or these are, this was like, you know, my experience or whatever. Like I said, I want to hear that. <laughs> I want to hear that. Um, it's just, it's difficult to try and process those kinds of things when somebody's telling me what I should do, because you're trying every single moment of every day to navigate the best way. I mean, even if you're not pregnant, <laughs> navigate the best way to live your life and Think about the people in your life who you feel are truly qualified to give you advice. That's something that I get in, like I used to get in the comments and I read now in other people's comments too. It's usually younger people, no offense, but like, I don't mean like younger, like in your twenties or even late teens, it's like younger people. You know what I mean? Like 13 year olds and stuff will say things like, I, I'm entitled to my opinion. You know, you need to learn how to take criticism and that kind of thing. And they don't really understand the dynamic of um, you know, that being a human being on the other side of the screen kind of thing. And that, you know, honestly, no, <laughs> not everybody needs, not everybody deserves to have an opinion on, on that person just because they put themselves online. And um, not everybody needs to learn how to uh, take criticism from every single human on the planet. No one should be expected to do that. So like, think about the people who you feel are qualified to give you advice in your life. It's probably pretty few. So this is the M Cosmetics brow that you guys told me to get. <laughs> this is the blonde brow cream and it's definitely stiff, it's stiffer than I'm used to. Um, I feel like I could have like wiped that brush off more before I started putting it on because it dried really fast. 
and I feel like I need a different spoolie to like even it out because the more I'm trying to comb through it, the more <laughs> product I'm applying. <laughs> That's not what I want. This brow turned out fine because she always turns out fine. <laughs> but my right brow is always the problem child. Mm, okay, my battery's dying. I'm gonna put on my eyeliner and mascara and then we'll come back and talk about lips. See you in a second. Well, that definitely changed my framing, so apologies. <laughs> I'm actually gonna take a little bit of that contour from Uma. It's a pretty color and I just need a little bit more kind of around so that I'm not so pink. <laughs> it's a little bit tanner than Kiki's, but it spreads really beautifully. So I ended up being okay, I guess, is uh, the big the big takeaway here. You know, I want you guys to know that I'm okay. But yeah, I do. I, <laughs> I have a lot of like weird, I don't wanna say undiagnosed because you know, I've been diagnosed with IBS and IBS is actually something that tends to get kind of, um, misinterpreted. A lot of times it's just kind of like this catch-all that doctors just seem to use for, uh, you know, like, hey, you have a bunch of stomach problems and we don't know what they are. <laughs> um, and, you know, at the end of the day, I do need to go and get like, uh, like an endoscopy or something like that to like really find out if there's something like wrong, wrong. Um, but, you know, the flare-ups and things like that have become so few and far between that it just hasn't been on my radar in a long time. Um, especially like having to do with like psoriasis and all my autoimmune stuff that I feel like does actually tie in pretty closely with uh, stomach issues. Um, your immune system gets suppressed by pregnancy. And so I haven't had to take any of my psoriasis medication or anything like that. It's come through a little tiny, tiny bit like on my scalp and a little bit on my leg, but for the most part, um, it hasn't been a problem at all. And so this is the first time that it's kind of reared its head in a way. And I feel like I just kind of need to like ride it out. So I am gonna go in with my uh, my lip liner here, my khaki lip liner from Thrive. And I'm gonna try this bourgeois lip gloss. They're saying this is a lip gloss <laughs> from, uh, from the lip bar. And it was like the most subtle one that I could find, but it still looks incredibly pigmented. Like it looks like a long wear dry down matte lip color, uh, liquid lipstick in the tube. So I'm a little nervous about it, but yeah, I didn't clarify. Um, it seems like, you know, IBS is a, is a catch all term that, you know, doctors use when they don't know. Actually it's associated mainly with intestinal spasms and they, who knows, <laughs> who knows where thoughts come from. But, um, I have something called dicyclamine that I can take uh, under those circumstances, but I, I genuinely don't know if my doctor would like approve that. It was a Sunday, things like that, so I didn't take it. Ooh, it's a really flexible wand. Soup's pigmented. Soup pigmented. Does it have a smell? No, I don't think so. Um, definitely more like a more like a liquid lipstick. My goodness, what are we doing here? It like won't spread out. <laughs> mm. You guys get to see in real time why I don't wear a lot of like really solid lip colors because they just take over my face. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, it's super dry. Feels really, really dry. <laughs> Not a fan of that. Where are my, my Rowan lip glosses, my liquid lip balms? I don't like that. I don't like how it looks. I don't like how it feels. Sorry, lip bar. <laughs> I don't like your foundation and I don't like your lip gloss. <laughs> By the way, guys, kind of spoiling this a little bit, but I got the Acure, uh, the, the dupe that everybody was saying for um, the proteiny polypeptide. Um, I got that and uh, I really like the rejuvenating moisturizer that's supposed to be the dupe for it. It works really well. But here, I'm asking for advice. Has anybody used the SPF, the daily SPF? I put it on my face and it curdles. Like it literally gathers on like the, the peach fuzz on my face. Like I try and rub it in and it just goes like white curdles all over my face. I've shook it up, I've stirred it up. <laughs> I've like completely dried my face off and everything to make sure that it wasn't like water or something. That It is totally freaky and I don't understand it. And I almost never send anything back. But if I were like a normal beauty consumer, I would send it back. It's really, really weird. Mm. All right, I'm gonna move you guys out and we will talk about my thoughts on these products. How's that? Okay. <laughs> 
I really don't know about my framing here. I think it looks a little bit strange, but uh, either way. I think that the Ritual Defeat blushes are really pretty. In fact, let's go ahead and swatch those real quick. They're very different from the other one that they had before, the other formula that they had before that was very, very like, matte-ish pigmented, like opaque pigmented, whereas these are like glossy pigmented. And I feel like it, you know, because nectar, it makes a lot of sense. They do, they go on the skin really, really sheer. Uh, so just bear that in mind. And also don't be fooled necessarily by how much smaller the package is. You're really getting like almost exactly the same amount of product that you got originally, which is super, super interesting to me because it, it's deceptive looking. But I like them a lot. Just um, make sure that uh, you understand that you're like not getting like a crazy saturated pigment out of these. The lip bar, I am pretty, <laughs> Pretty disappointed in the foundation. It just like totally freaked me out. It dried down way too fast. And I mean, obviously the color being not that great is my fault. <laughs> it's not like their formula's fault, but it did oxidize pretty immediately. And I just think that for a skin serum foundation with hyaluronic acid, it shouldn't dry down like that. It was totally freaky. And then this, this lip gloss is like a total pass. It's just too dry and too pigmented. It doesn't feel like a lip gloss at all from someone who really loves lip glosses. But I feel like this uh, this face palette is actually really well informed for, uh, you know, for like the ranges of skin tones that they cater to. Um, for pale skin tones, this is actually a really, really lovely shade of contour. It's actually got almost a little bit of like a, a green olive thing to it. The highlight, it does lean a tiny, tiny bit gold, but it's still really neutral. Um, and then this blush, blush tone, uh, and then this pale tone, while I used it on my eyes, I feel like that's actually a pretty good like little microcosm to test out like highlight and contour with. And um, these are pretty low pigment and I feel like the shades work really well straight out of the pan. And for someone who's as pale as I am, it gets the job done without you feeling like you've done too much and can't get your way out of it kind of thing. So I really appreciate products like this. This might be, uh, this might be kind of like a future favorite. Uma concealer kind of blew my mind it's actually really brightening and sheer and lightweight and pretty and when you spread it out it kind of like still behaves like a serum not necessarily like a dry down silicone -y sort of thing it's very very pretty i got the shade white pearl t 0.5 really lovely. <laughs> I enjoy this a lot at first, first blanche here. I don't know where the highlight and contour stick just went, but I really liked the contour on it that we, uh, that we used kind of at the end. And the highlight is very much more like a bronzy blush. So just, you know, be aware of that, even though it's like the lightest shade or whatever, the highlighter is still not very highlighty. The M Cosmetics, I really like the brow pencil and I actually just ran out of my Eye of Horus brow pencil. Let's actually swatch those next to each other for like shade comparison, because that's the main thing that I really liked about the Eye of Horus was just that it had um, the perfect match for this kind of non-color that my hair is. I don't know if you can even see that, but believe me, they're really, really similar. So I think that that's a really good uh, color dupe for the Eye of Horus that I just ran out of. So that's really nice. The brow uh, mousse situation, if you're looking for hold, it seems to have a lot of hold. I don't love the wand. <laughs> I think the wand is really annoying actually because um, it's very flexible. I like something that is not like that. <laughs> it's, it's super tiny, which is, is fine, but like I need a little bit more brush than that. And you know, I think that that's why I really like the, uh, the Glossier Boy Brow. Um, I think the color is really, really nice. Again, I got it in uh, blonde, but I, I definitely think that like, yes, this is a good option. I still like Boy Brow better. So I think that that is it for my buzzer beater video. Just trying to get as much Makeup, I found it. <laughs> there it is, wow. Uh, that's, you know, here's, here's the highlight and contour stick. But yeah, you can see that's much more of a blush slash bronzer than, uh, than a, a highlight for me. Anyway, um, yeah, that's my buzzer beater video for right before we start doing my mid-year roundup. I hope you guys are looking forward to those. I'm going to try and get a lot of rest between now and then so that I can be a little bit higher energy for you guys because right now, I, um, I, I do, I feel like I got hit by a truck. <laughs> I genuinely feel like I got hit by a truck. I woke up this morning and I was like, oh. But, uh, but yeah, I wanna leave you guys with one thought and that is that no matter where you're at in your life, no matter what's going on, it is okay to not be okay. 
do not feel pressure to be okay just because it, you feel like uh, you're inconveniencing other people in your life or things like that or that you need to fix yourself. Uh, it's okay to sit in discomfort. It is a very healthy thing to do to feel through your feelings instead of feeling around them. I highly recommend reading Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. It's the greatest book in the world and it will teach you a lot of self-forgiveness and teach you how to be vulnerable with yourself. And now I'm going off on a tangent, but oh, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for my big roundups. I'm really excited to share those with you guys. So if you did enjoy this, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. I don't blame you. Um, if you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you. I really do. I love you guys so much. Uh, and I will see you in the next time.